Hello, and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Here we're going to dive into the way the calculator handles matrices, or matrix math is another word for it. So in this section, what we're going to do is learn how to create a matrix in the calculator, how to store one, and how to properly input one, basically, and how to modify one once you have one in there. So it's kind of like just dealing with how to generate the matrices. And then in the subsequent sections to follow, we're going to operate on those matrices, you know, taking the inverse, taking the determinant it's solving a system of equations with matrices. So the first thing you need to know is there's two main ways to input a matrix into the TI-89. And it just depends on how much of a rush you're in and what you're doing as to what you choose. They're both perfectly valid ways. The first way is to input the matrix directly into the command line. You can, you can input it directly into the command line and just press the enter button and the matrix will go right up on the screen. So that's what I want to teach you first. Uh, and the way you do that is you need to use these brackets just like we talked about before. In fact, if you remember from the last section when we were talking about vectors, I told you that vectors were really kind of like a very small matri matrix, and that's why we use the same bracket. Now let's say you want to enter a two by two matrix. That means two rows and uh, two columns. So the way you do that is the, the, uh, the columns are separated by, by uh, commas. So if you wanted to do one comma two, uh, this would be like the first row of, a, of the matrix. But you have to tell the calculator at some point when to go on to the next row and when to treat the next digits as being on the row below. So to do that, use a semicolon. The semicolon is right here. So you hit second function nine and it'll put a semicolon there. Let's put uh, three comma four and let's close this guy off. You have just input your first matrix into the calculator. 1, 2, and when you have them separated by commas, it's going to assume they're on the same line. When you put a semicolon, it's like a, almost like a, a break, and it tells it to go to the next line and put your next guys in. So if you hit Enter, the calculator will reformat the way that you would typically see it in a textbook. So 1 and 2 are on the top line. The semicolon tells it to go to, on the next line, and then 3 and 4. Now let me go over here and modify this some more. Let me put another semicolon like this, and let's put 5, 6. And I think you might be able to guess what's going to happen is it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 because of these two, and then the semicolon here tells it to go take a break again, 5 and 6. All right, now let me go and delete this guy. We'll play with this just a little bit more just to give you a little bit of practice with it. Let's say we wanted to create a matrix that had four columns and three rows, let's say. So let's go ahead and put our brackets on there. Let's just type some numbers. 4, comma, negative 2, comma, 3, comma, 4. We forgot our comma there. So we'll put a comma and we'll do 4 like this. So this is going to all be treated as on the same line, on the same row. 4, negative 2, 3, 4. So to make it break to the next guy, we just put a semicolon. Let's do 8, comma, 9, comma, 7, comma, 5. That's our next row of numbers right and then we do another semicolon to tell it to break again and we'll do one comma two comma three comma zero so we go off and we put this guy in there close it off so we have three groupings with the semicolons each containing numbers with four four numbers basically separated by commas so the way it's going to input that is this is the first row, this is the second row, this is the third row. The, the rows are separated by the semicolons. So, you know, it's a little bit cumbersome. You never would have guessed to do this without uh, reading the book or watching the video. But once you know how to do it, it's actually incredibly fast to enter these things this way. All right. Now, one thing you need to know about matrices is that a lot of times you want to store a matrix into a variable name so that you can then, uh, you know, you operations on it. In other words, this is kind of long to type in. So if you have to type it in more than once, it's a real pain. So all you have to do, let's say we had just typed all this business in, which we did, then just like for the vector lesson, uh, it's the same exact process. Hit the store button and give it a name. And it can be a, uh, you could name it something, you know, I can name it Jason if I wanted to, or I could just give a single variable name like A. So it's going to be stored under the letter A. We hit enter and it returns the matrix. It tells us it's stored in, in variable A. We can go and, and delete everything and then to, to confirm to ourselves in variable A, there it is. Now before we go on uh, to, to doing uh, more operations with this guy, I want to point out two things. 
One, if you go months and months storing lots of things in single variable names like that, you're going to eventually forget that you did store something here. And so when you when you do a squared in an equation later on, it's going to use the matrix value. So if you want to clear all of your single variable names out, you just go to F6, clean up that second function, and over here, clear A to Z. So clear it. It says, I'm going to clear one character variables, which means A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z. Hit enter, and it's gone. All right, now there is another way to do this. Let me show you really quickly. Let me put another real small matrix in, and then we'll put a semicolon, and then we'll put a nine comma eight. We'll close this bracket. We'll store it in a variable uh, B, let's say. Whoops, I did the wrong thing. Got to go alpha B like this. So we're storing this matrix in B. So it tells me it's stored in there. Let me go clear it. Just to confirm to yourself, B, you put it on the stack, it does have a matrix in there. Okay. Now, what if you don't want to clear all of your variable names? I mean, that's very likely. In fact, you don't want to clear them all. The easiest way to clear individuals like this, individual guys, is to go over here to the var link menu. The variable is what you need to focus on. Uh, second function, var link. And it's going to list, as you see, this. your real calculator is going to have lots and lots of variables here. You might have to scroll down. But eventually, in, in the main folder, I have got a, something named B. MAT means matrix. The number really doesn't mean so much, but it's telling you there's a matrix stored in B. So I can go down to here and I can hit the check mark, number four, to check this. And then I go to F1, manage, and delete. Everything that I have checked, if I had lots of variables listed and I check them, then everything that I delete here is going to ask me, do I want to delete it? Yes, I do. So it's gone. And then if I pop out of here and put B back on here, it's going to basically be empty again. So if you ever get weird answers, it might be because you've got something stored in a variable. Okay. Now that was the sort of the easier way, I think, to, to enter really quick, small matrices. You know, two by two matrices, three by three matrices, two by three matrices, something like that. But what if you had to enter a 10 by 10 matrix or, you know, a 20 by 19 matrix? And what if you're doing some really complicated analysis and the matrix is really large? Then typing it on the command line is just going to have you make a mistake after a while. Fortunately, the calculator gives you an alternative way to enter matrices. And you can actually use this method to enter any matrix you want, even if it's a really small matrix. So what you need to do is go in the apps menu. So we're going to go into the press this apps button. Now depending on what calculator you actually have in your hands, you might see something slightly different than this. Uh, if you have a titanium, you might see this menu. If you fiddle with your settings, you might see a drop down list. If you have an older TI-89, you might have a slightly different menu. But somewhere on, their pa on that page should be an entrance, uh, an, an entry for data slash matrix editor. So if your screen looks slightly different than what I have, just scroll down and look for, for data matrix editor. So go ahead and hit enter. And it's going to give us the option here of, of, uh, of looking at a current matrix, opening a matrix that we have previously stored, or creating a new matrix. Now again, when you get to this point, your menu might look a little bit different depending on exactly how old your calculator is, whether you uh, have a titanium calculator or not, but certainly these three options will be available. Uh, number two is to open a matrix you've already saved. Number three is to create a new matrix. So let's go to number three. Go ahead and hit enter and you'll be taken to a new screen. So it's basically telling you we're going to create a new entry. Uh, the type that we're going to create, see it's, it's automatically going to say data. You need to fly this menu out and select matrix because we're trying to create a matrix. Don't forget to do that or it's not going to work right. Creating a matrix, we're creating it in the main folder. Uh, if you have different folder that you've created to store these things, you could put it somewhere else, but I always just leave it in main. Now you need to provide a variable name. This is just what you're going to name the thing. You can type in whatever you want. Um, and so I'm going to put uh, C. So I'm going to hit this button here for C. Notice it's already in alphanumeric mode, so I don't even have to hit alpha. You know, I can hit, I could type out something longer if I want. For this purpose, I'm just going to put C. Next, I need to tell it how many rows in my matrix. So let's do two rows. And notice it's still in alphanumeric, so I need to take it out of that to be able to type a number in. So two rows and let's say three columns. Two rows and three columns. So I'm taking a matrix, I have a name for it, two rows, three columns, and go ahead and hit enter. And when we hit enter, we are taken to what we call the matrix editor here. So you see here you have C1, C2, C3, this means column one, column two, column three. 
uh, row one, row two. And you see down here, as you start to move around, it'll say R1, C3. This is row one, column three, right? Row one, column three. So basically, it's, it's like a computer. You just type in your numbers at this point. So let's put two, hit enter. It'll automatically go to the next guy. Five, hit enter. Nine, hit enter. It's going to go down to the next line automatically. Seven, put a negative number in here, you know, negative three or whatever. Now, once you enter the all of the items that you have defined that your matrix is going to contain, there really is no save button. Once you've entered all of these things, the operation's done. It is save that matrix in the name that you've provided. So there, see, there's no save button. A lot of people get here and they're like, what do I do? Well, you're, you're done. You've typed everything in. So just go ahead and quit. And let's go back to the home screen. And so hopefully everything should have been saved. So let's hit alpha C, hit enter. And the matrix that we entered is already in there. So it's like I said, I mean, this guy, once you know how to enter it on the command line is, um, is actually not that bad to enter on the command line, but, um, you know, certainly if you have to enter a lot of these things and you know what you're going to name them, it's just a little bit easier to do it in the in the editor. And you can also enter much larger matrices much, much easier, especially if you have decimals. What if you have decimals here everywhere or scientific notation for these entries where you're having to enter the, uh, you know, this button a lot where you have 3 times 10 to the 95? Well, then doing that on the command line is going to get, going to get ugly, but if you, you can do it in the editor pretty easily. All right. Now, what if we had already saved a matrix? and we would like to change it or edit it, right? So let's say we enter this and we say, oh no, this isn't supposed to be a two, it's supposed to be a one. The easiest way to do that is to go back into the apps menu, find where it says data matrix editor, your menu might look a little different, and go ahead and open up a matrix, number two, okay? Now again, it's going to default to data, you don't wanna deal with that, you're, telling, you're trying to tell it you're dealing with a matrix, so select that. You need to tell it the folder you're dealing with. So if you have different folders on your calculator, tell it where to look. I always keep everything in main. And notice that I only have one matrix available. So it's going to assume that this is the one I have. If I had more than one matrix, I would have a drop down menu that I could select. But right now there's just this one. I hit OK. And so here I go. Now, I don't need to tell it how many rows or columns or whatever. All I need to do, let's say I want to, uh, to change this guy to one, I can go ahead and Stick a one there and hit enter. And again, there's no save button. It's automatically done. So I can go out here, back to the home menu, and put C on the stack here, enter, and you'll see that it's changed. So you can definitely alter what you've already typed in. And in fact, it's very easy to add rows and add columns. A lot of times, we'll go ahead and open this guy up again, fly it out and go to the matrix menu. So we've already got it all done here. C is the one we want to talk about. What if I decide, oh, it's actually not a, um, a, a, a two by three matrix, it's a three by three matrix. So you just go to the next line that you want to input some stuff in and just start typing. Four, it's, now once you type in a number, it's going to automatically put zeros for the rest of the row because it's going to assume that you need to put items into those blanks. So just put them in there. And if you're like, oh man, actually I needed another column too, then just go over to the right. Column four is blank. Just start typing stuff. And you need to go back over there to fill in for the zeros, you know, put negative one there. So now I've altered the matrix. There's no reason to save it. It's, it automatically does that for you. So go back to home and enter C, which is already on the stack, hit enter. And now the matrix is much larger, okay? So that about does it for entering matrices. Basically, we have learned how to, um, how to enter a matrix on the command line and how to delete matrices from memory and how to uh, use this uh, data matrix editor to input larger matrices. So what if you had to do a, a much, much larger matrix? I mean, it would make more sense to do it in the uh, editor tool. And we've learned how to take a matrix that we have defined by any means and go into the matrix editor. Uh, in fact, it doesn't even matter how you create the matrix. You could put the matrix right here on the command line. You could do 8, 9, and you could do semicolon 7, 8, right, which is just a 2 by 2 matrix, very small matrix, right? And, uh, you know, you could store this guy using the store button in variable P, let's say. So we have this guy stored in variable P. So I created this on the stack. I also have this matrix C that we created in the editor, but I can, it doesn't matter how you create these matrices. When you go to open them in here, uh, then you see you need to go fly this out to matrix 
And when you do that, you see how it's got C? It's, it's got one of these matrices selected, but if you hit the arrow, you've got two matrices to choose from because it looks in that folder and it looks to see how many matrices you have in there and it lists them all for you to edit. So if I want to enter that smaller matrix that I have already stored, I hit enter and then boom, there's my matrix. I can make an alteration, change this guy to a seven, let's say, quit back out of here and then go back to the home menu and then put, uh, I can put a P on the stack here and then I can see that everything has been changed. I changed that nine to a seven, everything else remains the same. So that's how you enter matrices. Very, very important, a little bit cumbersome to do until you know how to do it, but once you know how, just like anything else, it becomes very easy. So we're gonna close the section off. In the next several sections, we'll learn how to use this information to operate on matrices, taking the inverse, taking the determinant, solving equations, doing lots of other matrix operations.